Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mario Kart Wii testing tutorial series. Last episode I went over the installation process, so if you haven't seen that already, go check it out first. In the second episode, I'll be explaining what Gecko codes are, how to use the codes available in the all-in-one pack, and how to add your own. Before you start using them, it's important that you understand what they are. Gecko codes are simply cheat codes for Wii games. In the context of Mario Kart Wii, some examples are speedometers, lap and speed modifiers for custom tracks, infinite mushrooms, or rapid fire hopping code. Dolphin Emulator comes with a code handler called Gecko, and codes which are built for this code handler are known as Gecko Codes. The Gecko code handler injects the cheat codes into the game's memory, thereby altering its instructions, causing the game to behave differently. If you want to learn more about how Gecko codes work, check out this incredibly good write-up by Vega, link is in the description. As mentioned in the first episode, Mario Kart Wii has four different regions. The game's memory is structured differently for each region, so a different Gecko code has to be made for each one. The PAL version of the game is the most documented in terms of reverse engineering and cheat code work, so a lot of Gecko codes are written for that region before being ported to the others. In Dolphin's Gecko code settings, which I'll explain in a minute, you have the ability to enable or disable certain Gecko codes, so when the game's booted up, the enable codes will be applied. If too many codes are enabled, or several very long codes are, the code handler will be unable to inject all of them, and as a result, some or all of the codes you wish to use may not work. In the previous episode, I mentioned how save states are a snapshot of a specific state the game is in. One feature of save states is that the state of the game includes which codes are applied. This means, if you have different codes enabled on a later session, and load a save state from an earlier session, the enabled codes will revert to that of the earlier session. A key component in many Gecko codes is button activators. Button activators allow for more advanced code features, such as activation, deactivation, or repurposing of controls. Most codes with button activators come with customization available, in the form of three different placeholder values. I've linked this page listing all controller address and button values in the description below. This is an essential resource whenever you need to fill in these placeholders. As said in the previous episode, you need to ensure you have cheats enabled. This is the most common fix to questions or problems related to Gecko codes. Without this setting turned on, Gecko codes will not work. Assuming Dolphin is already open, on the main window, right click Mario Kart Wii, and click Properties. Next, click on the Gecko Codes tab. This is the window I showed before. In the center is a list of every Gecko code packaged with the all-in-one pack. You can scroll down to see more, there are quite a few available. On the left are the checkboxes, which allow you to enable or disable certain codes. Several are already enabled by default, unless you know what you're doing, leave them enabled. Clicking on the name of the code will reveal more information about it, such as its creators, notes which I've provided, and the code itself. You can scroll down in the notes and code boxes if the window is too small, which it most likely is. Unless stated in its notes, every code with button activators has been pre-filled with default mappings. Depending on what version of Dolphin your all-in-one pack is based on, the buttons at the bottom may differ. If it's still based on 5.0 stable, you should see Edit Config, Show Defaults, and Download Codes. If it's based on a more recent version, you should see Add New Code, Edit Code, Remove Code, and Download Codes. Edit Config will open the .ini file containing all of your Gecko codes. The code list starts with the Gecko line, followed by each code, one at a time. Each entry can be broken into four parts. The name, the creators, the code, and the notes. At the end of the code list is the Gecko enabled line, followed by a list of all the enabled codes. Clicking on the checkboxes in Dolphin edits these lines. In modern versions of Dolphin, the edit config button was removed. You can instead edit the INI file directly from Dolphin by clicking on the Game Config tab and the Editor tab. Gecko codes are in the lower User Config section. If you ever want to find a file without opening Dolphin, go to your main Dolphin folder, click on the User folder, and the Game Settings folder. Finally, click on the file with the name of your ISO's game ID. Show Defaults will simply open the default settings preset by Dolphin itself. You don't ever really need to look at this. In modern versions of Dolphin, this was also relegated to the editor tab and are in the upper default config section. 
add new code, edit code, and remove code are buttons only present on modern versions of Dolphin. They allow you to much more easily configure your Gecko codes without ever having to open the INI file. Download codes will download game-specific codes from the WeRD code database. This is meant to allow casual players access to a wide range of Gecko codes for any game, however is about a decade out of date. On 5.0 Stable, this button doesn't even work, so it's useless. On a more modern version of Dolphin, clicking on it will add over 200 new codes to your code list, which is incredibly inconvenient as a tasser. In either case, never, under any circumstances, press the Download Codes button. I'll now briefly go over how some of these provided codes work, so you know how to use them. For any I don't go over, please take a look at the Gecko Codes from Mario Kart Wii Tassing document, this video is loosely based on it, and in fact, all the codes and notes in the all-in-one pack were taken directly from it. Link is in the description. License Unlock allows you to start the game with everything unlocked. Any license you create will automatically have all characters, vehicles, cups, and modes available. Task Code is the single most important code available to Mario Kart Wii Tassers, and is responsible for shaping our entire process of tassing to be the way it is. It comes with two button activators one to activate the code, and one to deactivate it. By default, X is the activator and Y is the deactivator. When racing a ghost, activating task code will force the player to copy the inputs of the ghost, allowing for a live replay of the ghost. Deactivating task code returns control of the inputs to the player, allowing for changes to be made in the middle of an existing run. You can activate task code at any point in the race, and as many times as you want. Task code will actually copy the inputs of whichever ghost you last watched, so entering a solo time trial will play back the ghost's inputs so long as you race the ghost first. This allows you to copy inputs from one track onto another. The benefits of task code detasing are monumental, and I'll go into further detail about how it can be used effectively in the next episode. End race early allows you to instantly finish the race at any point. For this reason, it's more commonly known as instant finish code. It comes with one activator, which by default is Z. When pressed, the race ends immediately, and any unfinished laps are maxed out or set to zero. If you are at or beyond lap 1, your race time is the result of the same calculations used for the CPUs you beat in Grand Prix or Versus modes. If you never enter lap 1 or cross back over the finish line, your race time is maxed out as well. Interestingly, you can even instant finish before the race begins. Doing so during the countdown will let you save a ghost, as inputs start 4 seconds before the race does. Doing so before the countdown will still work, but you won't be able to save a ghost. Ghost Always Saves allows you to save any ghost, regardless of if it beats your previous time. When the split screen shows up, the newly finished run will overwrite whatever ghost was saved on that license, unlike CTGP, where every new ghost is saved separately. It will also be displayed at the top of the top 5 list. This code comes packaged with a few quality of life upgrades as well. The 6 minute ghost time limit is disabled, allowing all longer ghosts to save so long as they don't go over the ghost files input limit. In the event you go over the actual input limit, all your inputs up to the point you went over are still saved when the race ends. Normally, if you instant finish before lap 1 or spend over 100 minutes in the race, your time is saved as 99.59.999 and the ghost won't save, but with this code it will. Pull Input Range allows you to access inputs outside the GameCube controller's digital clamp circle, or for the Wii Chuck version, I'd said the Nunchuck's digital clamp circle. This is used to simulate the input range of the Wii wheel, without having to directly emulate one. To explain, inputs in Mario Kart Wii are simplified down to a 15x15 15 15 grid. The Wii wheel, or sideways Wii Remote, can access all inputs through motion controls. The Wii Remote plus Nunchuck was evenly clamped on all four corners to mimic how the physical joystick would be clamped by the casing. Finally, the GameCube and Classic controllers were further clamped unevenly on each corner. For more information on why the full input range of the Wii Wheel is useful, check out this video by Malio, which I've also put in the description. This code comes with a bonus feature of saving your ghost as if it was driven with the Wii Wheel, which also adds the wheel icon. Symmetrical full input range is identical to the previous code, however the simplified inputs of the GameCube controller are made symmetrical so as to allow the modifier key to give the same soft inputs on the left and right sides. Use this code instead of the previous one if you task with just your keyboard. Advanced Live Replay allows you to compare two ghosts as if they're racing each other live. Ghost comparisons have a player and a ghost. The comparison is from the player's point of view, and the ghost is the run being raced. To make the code work, you watch the replay of the player, 
then exit the replay. Now the inputs of the player are stored. Next, you race the ghost, and the stored inputs play back. If you instead race the player, or enter a solo time trial, this code actually acts like task code. Unfortunately, there are no button activators, so you can't regain control. You can, however, still use instant finish. RFH code allows you to perform rapid fire hop abuse. It comes with one activator. When the activator is held, the game will register those inputs as alternating B every other frame, creating a turbo or rapid fire input. The GameCube controller has two drift buttons, so the activator for the rapid fire hop is B itself, while you can still perform a regular hop with the R trigger. The Wii Remote Plus Nunchuck has only one drift button, so an existing button must be used as an activator. This has no pre-filled default, so if you use this version of the code, you have to configure it yourself. Super Grind code is identical to the previous code, however when the activator is held, the joystick inputs are also alternated to neutral. This is useful for Super Grinding, where the code gets its name. Load Courses from NAND allows you to load in custom tracks from a folder on your computer. The Wii's NAND is where all game save data is stored. On the physical Wii, it's stored inside the console, however on Dolphin, it's stored on your computer in the Wii folder inside your user folder. The code requires you to create a folder called Course inside the Wii folder, where you can place the custom track files you wish to load. These files must be named according to the track you wish to replace. Each track has its own distinct file name and comes with a .sts extension. On screen is a page detailing all Mario Kart Wii file names. You can find it in the description. For example, if you name your file beginnercourse.sts, when you start a time trial on Luigi Circuit, the custom track stored in the course folder will load instead. If you wish to play regular Luigi Circuit again, you simply need to make sure the file in the course folder isn't named beginner course anymore, then exit and re-enter the course and you'll be on Luigi Circuit. You never have to close the game, and you never have to close Dolphin. Load files from NAND is very similar to the previous code, however is much more powerful. It allows you to replace any file in the game with one stored on your computer. Once again, it must be stored in the NAND, i.e. the Wii folder. However, the file path must reflect the directory of the game's DVD. The code requires you first to create a folder in the Wii folder called armcx01, regardless of which region you have. If you want to replace tracks, you then create a folder inside that called race, and then another folder inside that called course. From there, everything works exactly the same way as load courses from NAND. For more information on the Mario Kart Wii file system, either head to Mario Kart Wii properties and click on the file system tab, or check out this article on Talkdom, which along with everything else is linked in the description. I don't have anything else to say about the codes you have available, however, you aren't limited to what you've been given. If you head over to mkwe.com, you'll find hundreds of codes available for online, offline, time trials, and battle. Once again, you can find all of these resources in the description. With that, you should now have a deep understanding of what Gecko codes are, how to use them, and what they do. In the next episode, we'll be looking at how the tools discussed in the previous two episodes actually get used, as I go over the testing process. Thanks for watching!